Hello everyone, this is uh, Dwight Woods at uh, the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, uh, flying solo again and um, trying to work my way through the technical difficulties and uh, I have no idea if you can hear me because I have no feedback here so if somebody will uh, you guys know that Carlos is the one who's who's the technical guy, so he knows how to do all this stuff, and I certainly don't. Um, but uh, I think there's a little icon there that says there are, there are a couple of people who are actually watching the uh, the broadcast. So I will I will consider that uh, you guys can hear me, um, even if I can't hear you. Okay, so there's. Uh, like somebody just just gave it a like, so I think I think we are we're live, and um, give me one second. Let me just turn on my um, backup camera here in case I lose um, what do you call it Wi-Fi or something. And uh, give me one sec. Okay, so um, you guys kind of snuck in the back door, and I didn't get to do an official. Um, opening of this broadcast. I think this is broadcast number six. I'm going to be wearing the uh, spectacles because I'm going to work from some notes that, that I made here on, um, on different things. Um, you know that, uh, that we were constantly... Okay, cool. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. Um, so this is how... That's, that's how it works and that's how it looks when, uh, when Carlos is in charge. Okay. All right, if I keep this up and I get real good at this, I might just kick him out <laughs> and run and run all of um, all these things. Like I'm just kidding. Uh, so wait, so now I'm supposed to do my best Carlos uh, impersonation. So um, pound the likes and share and um, what's the other thing? I think uh, I think you're supposed to say where you're where you're where you're coming in from. I think that's the other thing. Anyhow, enough of that nonsense. So let's. Um, Let's let's go ahead and and get started on this. So today we're gonna we're gonna revisit the um, the ongoing discussion of uh, misconceptions of what is and what is not. Uh, thanks, uh, Bradley. Okay, cool. All right, everybody can hear me. All right. Um, so we're gonna revisit the ongoing discussion of um, what is and what is not uh, Jeet Kune Do. We're gonna take a look at uh, some Jeet Kune Do personalities. And then, um, if I don't run out, if I don't run out of time, um, and if I, if you excuse me again, because I'll have to go off camera for a second and grab my notes, um, we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, I should, I should have done it in chronological order. I wanted to do an analysis, somewhat, of um, Bruce Lee's roles um, in front of and behind the camera in his movies. The one that that I started working on t earlier today. Um, was uh, Way of the Dragon, or what some people call Return of the Dragon. So, well, that's 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 my plan. Um, that's my plan for right now. So, um, I know that it seems like we keep harping on this question every broadcast, but it's almost as if it, it's like trying to um, trying to train a, a, a child, you know, and you have to teach them these lessons more than once. So, we have to we have to keep repeating that um, in the beginning, yes, it's true. Bruce Lee did talk about boxing, uh, about Wing Chun and boxing and fencing, and that that was uh, crucial to the, the development of his, um, his fighting style. But again, if anyone was to spend some time just reading what um, Bruce Lee wrote, then it's very obvious that he went way beyond um, that, 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 that three art breakdown of boxing, Wing Chun, boxing, and fencing. Okay? Um, last time that Carlos and I were on, we talked briefly about the idea of, like, I see a connection between the experiment that is the United States of America and the experiment that was. Um, that was uh, um, Jeet Kune Do. So, for example, um, in in the United States, we have the rule of law, 
and the Constitution is the highest, the highest law of the land, and the First Amendment to the Constitution uh, gives everybody the, um, the, the right to say what they want and to say what they think. And similarly in, in Jeet Kune Do, so the law of the land allows people to say what they want about Jeet Kune Do and what they think about Jeet Kune Do, but also within the art itself, the people have the freedom to, to think as they want to think, right, and to say what it is that they want to say. So I, for one, would never object to people being able to give their opinions on, um, on Jeet Kune Do. Um, even if it's somebody whose opinion is obviously not one that is um, well versed in deep study of the art and the philosophy of, of Jeet Kune Do. And so we had a little discussion on the I Love Jeet Kune Do page um, earlier this week, or I think, I think, or maybe last week. And again, it was, you know, some people. Uh, with in the school of thought that if you didn't do or if you don't do what Bruce did, and I always find that interesting when these people refer one they refer to him as Bruce, like if they're best friends, which is cool, and then um, also it, when they talk about well, if you're not doing what Bruce did, now how how are you going to know what Bruce did unless you were there? All right. See, so I have um, a, a close relationship with someone who was there for a period of time. His name is Dan Inosano. He's been my teacher for over 30 years. So if Dan Inosano says something, I'll listen to him because he was there. Now, my relationship with other Jeet Kune Do luminaries like Taki Kimura, um, the, the late Jerry Poteet, the late Ted Wong, um, the, the, you know, people like Pete Jacobs and Bob Bremer and, and, and what have you, my, my relationship is not as close with them because they are my seniors in Jeet Kune Do and not my, my instructors, but th those are guys who were also there. So if they say something, then you listen to them. Other people who talk about if you're not doing what Bruce did are referring to what they saw Bruce Lee do on screen. They're, they're referring to what in some um, circles we call cinematic or theatrical Jeet Kune Do and not the functional Jeet Kune Do. So I'll just tell, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I'll just tell you right now, that, that's a, a pet peeve of mine, especially when it comes to the Filipino Kali, because there's that group that tells you Bruce wasn't into Kali or Bruce didn't, and we have, we have talked about this before, but again, like I said at the beginning, this is something that has to be repeated because the, the repetition is one way that people learn uh, uh, new information or, or they, they, they take in new information. Repetition is, um, as my friend Ricky Amador likes to say, repetition is the, the mother of skill, right? And so we have to talk about, about these things. And I have seen enough pictures of Bruce Lee behind the scenes with double stick, with double dagger, with single stick, to give me a clue that um, he perhaps spent a little bit more time than just learning how to swing uh, the, the Tabatuyo or the Nunchaku. That he probably spent a little bit more time in the Filipino martial arts than, um, than he might be given credit for. All right. Anyhow, to get to get back to, to this idea, so there was there was one person whose contention was um, they seem to be saying that Ted Wong, for example, right, is a better representative of Jeet Kune Do because Ted Wong's footwork was eerily reminiscent of Bruce Lee's footwork. In other words, when Ted Wong moved, and I saw that for myself, I trained um, maybe. Uh, two or three times with with Ted Wong, and so I saw it for myself. And I will I will tell you that I felt exactly the same way. The first time I saw him, not even move, it was like Ted Wong glided. Right, the the rest of us the rest of us we do footwork. Ted Wong glided, and I had never seen anything like it other than Bruce Lee on camera, and so. I can understand why somebody's contention would be, okay, this guy moves just like Bruce Lee moved, so therefore he is a better student 
and a better representative of um, uh, uh, of Bruce Lee because he looks like Bruce Lee did. Yeah, that's that's an interesting approach, but it might be somewhat misguided. Because, for example, there are a lot of uh, you know Bruce Lee quotes are all over the in the internet um, these days. We use them. Uh, from time to time, right here at I Love Jeet Kune Do, when we we'll, we'll put a quote to um, to a photograph or, and 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 put that as a post. So I'm pretty sure that um, that you guys. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I. I'm, I think I have it here. Let me see if I can find it so that I I read it directly. But it's the quote that Bruce Lee has about not copying people, um, and I'm I'm convinced that Ted Wong was not attempting to copy Bruce Lee, Ted Wong was training what he had been taught, and so he, he ended up moving the way his instructor did. I asked Dan Asano something similar uh, many years ago, if it was okay to try to copy someone's um, style of moving, and he said yes, if that person's style is, um, is exemplary. So, so in other words, I try, when, when I started Muay Thai, for example, when I, when I started training in Muay Thai, I tried to move just like um, Surachai Sirisu did. I tried to copy him because to me, his, um, his way of, of, of moving in Muay Thai was like the epitome of what Thai boxing should look like. So you try to copy, um, you try to copy uh, Thai Sirisu and then your Muay Thai ends up becoming decent. So I think that's what happened with Ted Wong. What Bruce Lee said is, um, here, here it is, always be yourself, express yourself, have faith in yourself, do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate it. So right there is the instruction to not try to copy anyone, not try to be anyone other than yourself. So. I don't think, I'll say it again, I don't think Ted Wong was trying to be Bruce Lee. Ted Wong was being Ted Wong and just ended up moving, um, you know, in, in a very similar fashion to the way that his, his teacher moved. So, again, you know, people talk about doing what Bruce did. So, for me, I've seen Bruce Lee do double stick and I've seen Bruce Lee do double dagger. And I never saw him on screen do single stick. I've seen him posing with single stick, uh, so that is enough evidence for me to uh, to continue to train in Filipino Kali. And I'll, I'll come back to the Filipino Kali in um, in 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 another uh, in a few minutes. Um, here's here's another thing that you that you that you must learn to defend against, right? In the JKD world, it's when people say something like. Well, Bruce, and again, you know, they're on first name basis, right? Bruce studied all the arts. And they literally, they literally say all the arts. All. I mean, that's a hundred percent. So that means that Bruce Lee trained in a hundred percent of the martial art methods that existed on planet Earth at the time that he lived. I don't think so. Now, I'm not saying that Bruce Lee didn't have extensive, you know, didn't do extensive research and, and reading. I mean, we've talked about this before. His, his personal library consisting of over 2,000 books, right? A lot of which were martial art books. Uh, but I doubt that Bruce Lee trained in, um, what would what, what they call it? Um, let's say Kuksu Wan. right? I know my, my friend um, Rory Haddad, who is a, a, a Korean martial artist, um, well, he's Jamaican, but he <laughs> but he, he, he studies uh, uh, Taekwondo, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure that Bruce Lee didn't get to train in Kuk Soo Wan from Korea. Um, I doubt he got to train in Vo Vietnam from uh, from Vietnam, and I'm pretty sure that he didn't get to spend any time in um, Cambodian uh, kick, kick, uh, Cambodian kickboxing. I, th I think, right? And so I wouldn't use the term all because all means 100%. I understand what people are trying to say. I think what they're trying to say is that 
Bruce Lee did intense research into as many methods as, as he could come across in order to arrive at that understanding of things like motion, like distance and timing, and that type of thing. And so the idea is not that he studied all the arts. The idea is what they're really trying to say is that Bruce Lee studied um, extensively, judiciously, in order to arrive at a deep level of understanding. And I think that that's, that's evident in when he says something like, before um, I studied the art or before I understood the art, a punch was not a punch and a kick was not a kick. But now that I have studied and truly understood, I'm paraphrasing here, now that I've studied and truly understand the art, a punch is a punch. Right, and so again, so let, let's let's pick on Rory again because because he's he's still he's still watching, right? So R Rory is, I think Rory is like a fourth degree or fifth degree black belt in in Taekwondo. His front stance is probably not drastically different from the front stance that is employed by someone in um, in Hapkido. Let's say they're both Korean styles, right? The, the front stance of um, somebody in, in Shotokan, in Japanese or Okinawan Karate, might be a little bit deeper, but essentially they're going to have the same structure. A front stance in, in some Shaolin Kung Fu system, they're, they're pretty much going to look the same way. And so having arrived at a point where you truly understand the art, you recognize that a front stance is a front stance. And that's merely the beginning. Because now in Jeet Kune Do, the idea is, well, do we have to have a thing called a front stance, separate and distinct from a thing called a back stance, separate and distinct from a thing called um, a cat stance, separate and distinct from a thing called a horse stance, or are we seeking to be more, more efficient, and so what we have is a ready position or a fighting position. All right, so the idea of all the styles, no, all the arts, no, but you do as much research as you can. And if you think about it, let's, let's compare it or contrast it with the study of language. In order to become fluent, you do have to know the specific words in a specific language. But have you ever met people who speak Spanish, let's say, who can carry on a conversation with somebody who speaks Italian? Or have you ever met somebody who speaks Spanish who can carry on a conversation with somebody who speaks Portuguese? Now, nobody is fluent in the other person's language, but they do realize that there is a similarity, that there's a connection between the languages, and so they are able to, com to communicate. So you might not necessarily have to spend 10 years in a, a classical or traditional system like Shotokan in order to derive an understanding of another classical system like uh, Wado Ryu or, or Shito Ryu because there is going to be enough similarities, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm talking a whole lot about the classical, um, the classical arts and what have you and we really want to... We want. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me of something else because somebody said that um, you know, so what Carlos, what Carlos asked people to do was, um, if you're going to post on, um, on the I Love Jeet Kune Do pages, he asked people to post stuff which is relevant to JKD. And, and if, so if you're going to post something about your Gung Fu style, but what you're posting is that here's how... Um, here's how I became interested in Kung Fu. It's because of Bruce Lee, this and Bruce Lee. That. I'm making this up off the, the, the top of my head, right? So if somebody posted something like, well, I, I, I've never been able to train in Jeet Kune Do. I've always wanted to train in Jeet Kune Do. No, let me, let me try to find a better example. Um, uh, okay, the, 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 the kid in um, Afghanistan, I think they call him the Afghan Bruce Lee, right? So he... he I don't think he has any formal training in Jeet Kune Do because there is no, as far as I know, there's no qualified Jeet Kune Do people in, um, in Afghanistan. 
But he certainly belongs on the I Love Jeet Kune Do page because what, what he is about, what he is doing is definitely uh, connected to, 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 to what we are doing here, right? Um, but if you put a post, and, 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 and I really do not want to come off as if I am, I'm, I'm criticizing anyone because Bruce Lee is loved by tons of people outside of the art of Jeet Kune Do. Bruce Lee is loved by people who are not even in martial art what, whatsoever. And so I can understand if, if a kid who just got his yellow belt in Taekwondo and is excited about it, and the internet is, as of right now, an open forum. Uh, and so he posts that, 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 he's, you know, that he just got promoted in, in his, at his Taekwondo school. I get that. But it's not relevant to JKD, and so what what we're what we're trying to, to illustrate to people is that that's that's what we want you to do. There is so much discussion in JKD itself that when you post on the page, we want you to be part of that discussion and not bring in something in from uh, you know some somewhere else, right? So. Um, uh, let's see, I, I'm checking my notes here again to make sure that I I go into everything. Oh, yeah, so here, here was the other thing. Uh, when we talk about ridiculous stuff that people might, might, might talk about sometimes, there's then the notion that Bruce Lee took the best um, techniques from different arts or the best techniques from different styles. And I've even heard people talk about Bruce Lee took the best moves, right? So it's it's almost as if they're they're minimizing the uh, they're mi minimizing the art of Jeet Kune Do and and bringing it down to a, a series or a collection of moves or a collection of techniques. And that's not at all what what Jeet Kune Do is, is about. And again, the evidence for that is right there in, in Bruce Lee's writings, if you take the time to read them, if you take the time to um, study with a legitimate uh, certified in instructor, and if there is nobody in your area, as is want to happen sometimes, there is still, you still have access to, to uh, material. I mean, we have the, the quick skill series that's available to people here at I Love Jeet Kune Do. Um, and by the way, uh, volume two of that will be coming out um, very early in, in the new year. So again, people talk about Bruce Lee took the best techniques in the book. And even people who should know better, you will still hear them say something like that. That Bruce Lee took the best techniques or the best moves from the different styles and, and put them together. That's not it. Because as many people know, Bruce Lee talked a lot about... Um, becoming, becoming effective or even developing a fighting system is not about adding on and adding on and adding on. It's not the daily uh, increase. It's actually the daily decrease, right? He used uh, the, the idea of a, a sculptor who starts with a lump of clay and then by chiseling away at that lump of clay, you end up with the, the beauty of what um, was, was contained inside. It's not by adding more clay to your um, original mound that you become uh, that you become an artist. So it is the daily decrease, what he called hacking away at the unessentials, right? Um, so when people say that, when Bruce Lee studied all the styles, uh, Bruce Lee um, uh, took the best techniques, they are trying in their limited way to express their admiration for the extensiveness of the, the research and perhaps the, the knowledge and what have you that, uh, that, that Bruce Lee brought um, to the public in, in, in the martial art world, All right? Um, yeah, let's, let's see here. Okay, so, now, so this brings us now to the idea of Jeet Kune Do concepts. And if, if, I've, if, if there's ever been anything that I was sad, that, not sad, that I was glad to see the death of, it was this ridiculous argument of Jeet Kune Do concepts versus original Jeet Kune Do 
and at one time there was even this thing called pre-1973 JKD. I'm reminded of this because I was watching an interview with, um, with Sifu Inasano that was conducted by, um, I think it's uh, John Graydon. Um, and I, I wonder how many of you guys know who John, John Graydon is because this is a guy who was uh, so influential in the, um, about in the early 90s, I'd, I'd say, in the development of um, professional mar martial art in, in this country and beyond. Anyhow. Let's uh, let's uh, let's um, talk about Je Jeet Kune Do concepts. I, I I'm not sure if we've talked about that on this broadcast before, but here's the deal. What Dan and Asano, This is my this is my breakdown. This is my analysis, right? Because you know I'm I'm a um, I'm an armchair psychologist, right? Dan and Asano used the word con con concepts to. Uh, illustrate that there were certain guidelines or procedures or um, um, hang on a second Mahesh says I studied Jeet Kune Do Kali Sit through Birmingham Impact that must be um, Birmingham Im Impact JKD so out of out of out of London that's um, the late Dave Carnell I believe Car Dave was the was the the um, the founder of Impact JKD, and again, if I remember correctly, Dave's um, lineage, Mahesh, get, um, send me a message if, if, if I'm right on this, that Birmingham Impact, I don't remember if, if Dave himself was from, was from Birmingham, but it's definitely Dave Carnell, and Dave was a student of Cass Magda's, correct? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, all right. So I, I'm not losing my mind. See, so <laughs> actually, um, if, uh, <laughs> when something like that happens, right. See, then I go, okay. So all the people who think I'm crazy when I'm talking about, about, um, about JKD, see, when I do something like that in public, right. When I pull a memory from like 30 years ago, then we go, oh, okay. He might not be crazy. He actually knows what he's going, what, what's going on. Right. Okay. So, um, Dan and Asano and Jeet Kune Do concepts. I think, quite simply, here was the idea. He he didn't want to to um, commercialize Jeet Kune Do, and so the idea was: well, look, here are the concepts of Jeet Kune Do, and here's how we can uh, use them to gain an understanding of these other martial arts systems. Or, oh, look at this. Look at how Thai boxing, for example, when they use their um, what we call the, the long foot jab, right, or the teep, against the rear leg um, round kick, right, the, the, the te sai or the te qua, right? What you're doing is an interception. So in here now we discover, oh, so the idea of the way of the intercepting kick can be found in Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, and it can be found in Muay Thai. Oh, well, geez, what else is there in Muay Thai that, that, that what else is there that, that exists in Muay Thai that might um, just coincidentally exist in Bruce Lee's methodology? Well, maybe Muay Thai is a thing that we should, um, that we should uh, study, especially since it gets you in wicked cardio cardiovascular shape. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you get my point? That's the idea behind behind the, the concepts thing. So now let's let's talk about because Dan Inosano is synonymous with Bruce Lee and Filipino martial arts. So now we have to talk about one of my favorite things, right? Which is Filipino Kali's influence in um, in in Jeet Kune Do. In Dan Inosano's 1980 Jeet Kune Do book, Richard Bustillo, the late Richard Bustillo, talks about. Um, I think it's Richard Bustillo, that both arts stress the lead hand because when you go single stick, it's the lead hand. When you go single dagger, it's the lead hand. And then Bruce Lee stressed the lead hand. Uh, both arts, because of the Wing Chun influence in Jeet Kune Do, Wing Chun might call it trapping and uh, Kali might refer to it as check-in or safety factor. So again, we have... Um, uh, coincidences or similarities in, in, in an approach in um, methods that come from, from different places, 
right? So, makes me think again of the experiment that is the United States of America, where people who came from different places came to this one country and learned to assimilate, learned to blend aspects of their um, as a matter of fact, okay, so Mahesh is still on, right? He says, Kali is my, my favorite style of martial arts, right? So, Mahesh, if you're, if you could, um, back me up on this if I'm correct. In England, let's say in, in London, Indian food is now considered to be British food because, because when it comes to the, 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 the culinary society in England, uh, curry is so integral, right? It's been so integrated into British culture that now everybody says, yeah, we'll go get a curry, right? Am I, okay, yeah, see, right? So that, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So it's quite possible then for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, um, Penjak Silat, Filipino Kali, whatever and whatever, to become fully integrated into this thing that we call Jeet Kune Do. And then to, to say, oh, well, uh, you know, but back in the 1920s, um, Indian food wasn't so well in integrated into uh, London society, so we can't do it now. That'd be ridiculous. So to say, um, to say that, that uh, you know, Bruce Lee didn't do Muay Thai, so you can't integrate Muay Thai into Jeet Kune Do would be just as, as ridiculous. All right. Um, okay. So let's let's move on here. Uh, so this is this is the thing I want. We talked a little bit about about Sifu Dan and Jeet Kune Do concepts. And I'm wondering how many people out there ever realized. I don't know if it was deliberate or if it's just something that happened to to occur, but. Bruce Lee chose, out of the three people he chose as t to be his lieutenants, Bruce Lee chose two people who happened to be naturally self-effacing. Now, if you know me, you know I would never be disrespectful towards uh, my teacher or, or someone uh, who is my teacher's senior, right? So when I say that these two gentlemen were originally self-effacing, I'll back it up. So here's what, um, let's see, Taki Kimura said this about, uh, uh, about himself, right? Mahesh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go through your, your, um, your, your comments later on. I can only see like the first few words of what you're saying, but I thank, I thank you very much for, for playing along with me on, uh, on this broadcast, sir. Right. So Taki Kimura says that not making waves was the order of the day when, when he was a kid, which meant accepting the role of the second class citizen. And he ended up thinking, well, I better not do so and so. And as a child, he never did. He says, but then Bruce Lee came along and said, well, you're just as good as the next guy. And if you think, now listen to this, this is what Taki Kimura says Bruce Lee said to him. If you think in your heart that it's right, then to hell with what anybody else thinks about it. And I think that that's, that's a clue into how deeply invested Bruce Lee was in, in helping to develop not just the physical skills of, of his students, but their maybe even psychological and, and, and mental skills, right? So, um, you know, so he said, if you think in your heart it's right, then to hell with what anybody else thinks and do it. Now, Dan Inosano said this. He says, I was very shy and bashful and a real introvert, and Bruce Lee helped my personality by teaching me to be more confident and more outgoing. He said to me, well, why are you bashful? Have you ever thought of that, Dan? And I said, well, I guess I'm scared of people. And he asked, well, why are you scared of people? And, and uh, Inosano says, he said, well, I'm scared of making mistakes. And he said, okay, well, what's the worst thing that could happen to you if you made a mistake in public? And so I guess in the conversation, they, they listed everything, right? Like the worst things that Inosano could imagine. 
And he says that that helped him to see through the issue. All right, so this is in the early days. And this is, um, I, I think there was, I know there was a four year difference between Bruce Lee and Dan and Asano. And I'm pretty sure it was maybe even twice that, maybe eight years or more age difference between Taki, uh, Taki Kimura and Bruce Lee. It might have been, it might have been like 13 years or something. But here is, um, here's a, a, a young guy who is so well developed that he's made the connection between the physical and the mental and the emotional and therefore the, the spiritual, right? And he's not selfish with it. He passes it on to people that, that he cares about, right? So... I, I, so what, what I let's see what was the note I made here right that right from the start Bruce Lee was also teaching that Jeet Kune Do is a vehicle for personal growth and development and not just a method of combat right so he mixed the the philosophy of combat with the philosophy of life right so you know how uh, um, and excuse me if you guys can hear the um, the, the, the lawn people outside, they're doing some work around the house, all right? So I'm sorry if that's piping in uh, here. Um, so yeah, so Bruce Lee makes the philosophy of combat with the philosophy of life. And so just like you have to be prepared to deal with a, a, a self-defense situation, you have to prepare yourself to deal with the situations that will crop up in your life. And so, um, and this was something I mentioned, um, uh, John Graydon. And John Graydon was somebody that I heard talk about stuff like that. Also, there's another guy that you guys should check out, uh, Tom Callos. I, I'm out of, so, so, so out of like owning a martial arts school, so I don't follow the, um, the, the business ends of it. But John Graydon and Tom Callos in, in the early days did so much to help people uh, learn how to run um, uh, an effective school. And so Tom Callis was one who also talked about using your self-defense skills, your physical self-defense self skills, to become uh, skilled maybe at d defending yourself from the environment, <laughs> right? So again, it's the idea of the, the concept or the philosophy of what it is we're doing as martial artists and then applying that to life. Because I, I dare say that everyone who is an active member and a very involved member, even the ones with whom you might disagree, right? As martial artists, martial art defines us to a certain degree as human beings. And so when you... Um, I, I, somebody, somebody remind me to tell Carlos next time we have to have... Uh, uh, a moderator because I appreciate all the comments that are coming in guys uh, I, I promise you I'll go through them when we finish the broadcast will be which will be in just a few minutes and um, and I'll, I'll reply to anything if anybody's asked me a direct question but thank you so much for 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 commenting and, and sticking with me on uh, on the live broadcast and and giving me the confidence to do this by myself because uh, I always thought that you know Carlos is is more more um, technical than I am. And I don't, I don't know if you guys, like the big joke is that I finally got myself an iPhone 7, right? So I waited until they brought the 10 in and then um, I, I, I got a 7. Okay, so let, let's, uh, let's go into the final laps of, of, of this thing here. Um, when, when you start expanding your base of knowledge, it can take you down paths that you may not have first imagined for yourself. So Dan and Asano, for example, um, had already embarked on his search for, for truth in martial art, and this is how I understand it. So he, he had already um, started training with a, a, a couple of different Filipino martial art instructors by the time he met Bruce Lee. And so Bruce Lee was added to the roster of, um, of people under whom he, he was training. So he was leaving Southern California and going up to Northern California to train with people up there, like in Stockton and uh, San Francisco. And so adding Bruce Lee, because Bruce Lee lived in Oakland at the time, so adding Bruce Lee to the roster was a um, relatively easy thing to do, right? So I, I think that 
the fact that Inosano was already exploring his martial art knowledge, I think that when he and Bruce Lee met, that it was a meeting of minds because Bruce Lee had started his explore, exploration, Dan Inosano had started his exploration, and so I think that there was a, a, a meeting of minds and a sharing of information and knowledge and what have you, and that's how we ended up with the king of the nunchaku, right? Because it's well reported that Bruce Lee, uh, I'm sorry, Dan Inosano shared his knowledge of the, um, the, the what we all call the nunchuck, right? With Bruce Lee, and Bruce was like, yeah, this thing is going into the, the movies um, with me. Um, so this is what I, I told you I, I, I would mention, so I'll end with this. But we still get people today who are saying, Oh, actually, somebody said this about us because we had a little a little get together uh, last weekend, and uh, then we were in the garage, and somebody broke out the 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 sword and dagger, and so I did a sword and dagger thing, right? So we're at a party. Nobody is dressed to work out. So I mean, when I look at the video, I go, shoot! I hope nobody nobody sees this and thinks that this is how we train, right? Because I'm standing tall. I'm not even in the half squat position which is how we train with weapons. But anyhow, but somebody makes a comment about, oh, I looked at that video and I didn't see anything that Bruce Lee did. Man, how do you know that Bruce Lee didn't train stick and dagger? Because you weren't there, right? And like I said, I've seen enough, um, enough pictures of Bruce Lee with Filipino weaponry to think, man, he might have looked at some other stuff and it just never made it into, for example, the game of death. Who knows where... Uh, Bruce Lee might have gone with his, um, you know, exposing other martial arts systems in, in his movies, right? So, um, this is what I'll, I'll, I'll finish with. You'll hear people refer to weapons training and they'll say, oh yeah, and even sometimes Kali people, and, and I, this is just my personal opinion, I think they should know better. Because So feel free to disagree with me. They should know better be, when you say that the weapon is an extension of the empty hands. Eh, no. See, in training Filipino Kali, one of the keys is in understanding how the motion of the weapon could be translated or interpreted into the motion of the empty hand. So that's one thing. So it's not an extension. It's not like, well, my hand only reaches this far, but then when I have the stick, now, now my hand, the reach of my hand is, is extended. No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's a little bit more to it than that. So one idea is understanding motion with or without the weapon. And then the other thing is the development of attribute. And for me, this is why Filipino Kali is so important in my development as a Jeet Kune Do martial artist. Bruce Lee said that attribute development is one, is, is one of the, the highest levels of, of skill or understanding in Jeet Kune Do. If you get really fast with double stick, since it's your arms and hands that are propelling the double stick, guess what? your hands get faster. Now, maybe Bruce Lee didn't need any of that supplemental training. Maybe he was just superhuman, right? But us mere mortals, or me as a mere mortal, I need as much help as I can get. So I learned to whip the double stick real fast. That's it, Mahesh. Heaven six and, and all, the, all the, 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 the variations. And then it makes my... Um, it makes my empty hands really fast. So I remember um, very, very soon after I started training with uh, Sifu Inosano, I, I read something, I think it was like in the handout for his school or, or, or what have you, and it talked about the Filipino weaponry being a method of turbocharging your empty hand system, right? Okay, so Kali, JKD training method, um, uh, development of attributes, uh, that is going to be it for today's broadcast. Um, I hope you guys had a good time. I, uh, I, I enjoyed... <laughs> That's funny, Mahesh, right? Um, 
I enjoyed doing this. We The other thing we promised you is that uh, going into the new year, the broadcast will no longer just be my ugly mug or Carlos's ugly mug. Uh, sometimes it'll be the two of us on screen. And, uh, but at other times I will be interviewing other uh, Jeet Kune Do notables as soon as I can work out the, the technicalities of it, right? So, um, but in time for, we will have a broadcast next uh, Wednesday. I believe Carlos is still in town. So we'll try to do that. Um, we'll try to do that together out of the, the boardroom uh, instead of here in, in, the, uh, in the den. And, um, if you guys have any questions or any topics that you'd like for us to cover uh, in upcoming um, episodes of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, feel free to get in touch, reach out and, um, and send them to us, and we will uh, handle them to the best of our ability. All right, thanks everybody for uh, spending some time with me. Um, Merry Christmas and all that good holiday stuff, and uh, we'll see you next week. Everybody take care.